Okay, so today we're diving deep into something that's really caught my attention. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a Broadway show. But get this, it's a futuristic romance. And the stars are robots. 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 I read this review, it came out just today, November 12th, 2024, and I just knew we had to talk about it. Oh. The show is called Maybe Happy Ending. Okay, I'm intrigued. Right. So apparently it's about these two robots, they're living in like a retirement home for outdated androids, and somehow they fall in love. A robot love story on Broadway. I know it sounds wild, but that's what's got me hooked. How do they pull it off? How do you have a musical that's funny and heartwarming, but also deals with things like loss and the fact that love doesn't last forever? Okay, well, first let's set the scene. So the musical takes us to the year 2064. Humans have, you know, they've moved on to newer robot models and the older models, they've been left behind. They're basically in this retirement home for technology. Kind of sad when you think about it. Yeah, well, that's kind of the point. The story focuses on two of these helper bots. There's Oliver, he's a helper bot three. He's all about routine listening to his old jazz records and holding on to this hope that his former owner might come back for him. Oh. Then there's Claire. She's a helper bot five, so a bit more advanced. And Claire's a little, I don't know, snarky maybe? Definitely aware that she doesn't have forever. Her battery, unlike Oliver's, it drains really fast. That's interesting. Different models with different lifespans. Right. And the play does a beautiful job of showing how their connection it starts as just a need for Claire to recharge, but it grows into something much deeper. It becomes about companionship, about love. And what makes this premise so unique, I think, is how it takes these big questions about love, about loss, and it looks at them through this very different lens, you know, the lens of artificial intelligence. It makes you think about what it means to be human, what it means to feel. You know, there are these details in the review that really caught my attention. The reviewer talked about how these robots, they go on a road trip, they stay in this kind of tacky motel, they even see fireflies. Oh, wow. And I was like, those are all these experiences that we think of as, you know, really human. Experiences mm -hmm. about freedom, about wonder, about being connected to the world around us. And it just made me wonder, are these human experiences what help the robots understand what love and loss really mean. I think you're right on the mark there. The whole show is playing with our ideas about what's human, what's love. Even the music is doing that. The music's by Will Aronson, and the lyrics are by Hugh Park. And the reviewer described it as Burt Bacharach meets Sondheim with this effervescent bounce. That's a really interesting combination. Right. So you've got Burt Bacharach, known for these lush romantic pop hits. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got Sondheim, the legend of musical theater. His music is so intricate, so emotional. Mix those together and you get something that's sophisticated, it's playful, and it reflects all the complex emotions that the story is exploring. I love that. And it's not just the music. The scenic design plays a big role too. The designer, Dane Laffrey, he uses these shifting panels on stage and they represent like the passage of time, the way we journey through our memories. It's a really beautiful visual metaphor and it connects perfectly to what the robots are going through. So we've got this amazing music, clever design, and then of course there are the actors who bring it all to life. We've got Darren Chris. Oh, I know him. You probably recognize him from some of his other roles. He's playing Oliver. Yeah. And playing Claire, well, this is actually her Broadway debut, Helen J. Shen. Oh, cool. A debut. The review really praised their performances. It talked about how they had this jerky robot charm, but at the same time, they were able to show this real human depth that the audience connected with. So how do you act like a robot, but still make people believe you're feeling these deep emotions? That's the magic of it, right? And I think that's what makes maybe Happy Ending such a powerful show. It takes these huge questions we all wrestle with. How do we deal with the fact that love ends? Yeah. How do we hold on to memories, even the painful ones? Big questions. Right. But we're seeing it all through the eyes of robots. And what's fascinating is that by facing their own mortality, not in the same way we do, but their battery life running out, it gives us this whole new perspective on these timeless human dilemmas. Almost like by seeing it through this artificial lens, it helps us understand our own emotions better. It's like it makes the familiar strange again, so we can really see it. Yeah, exactly. So to wrap things up for our listeners today, we've been talking about this show, Maybe Happy Ending. It's this futuristic romance, but it's also got so much heart. It's exploring these themes of love, loss, and what it really means to be alive. Themes that I think we can all relate to. Absolutely. Whether we're human or, you know, a helper bot with a draining battery. And I think the play leaves us with a really interesting question. Could we actually learn something new about our own human experiences 
by looking at them through the eyes of robots. It really makes you think, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely intrigued. If any of this has piqued your interest, I really recommend checking out Maybe Happy Ending. I have a feeling you might be surprised by how much emotion, how much insight you find in this robot love story. Until next time, happy exploring.